Ah, uh, jeez, are we about to shoot the video? I was gonna, yeah. Ah, can you just wait one sec? I gotta do concussion protocol. Oh, wait, what? Can you explain? It's all right, I'm back. Hi! Leafs Nation Dan Witness Bronx and Lucas! Oh, biblical! Austin Matthews is the Leafs! Why do I watch hockey? Stressfully! Mostly! Are you in Leafs win! 3-2! to two. Hey, a normal hockey score over the LA Kings. For any Kings fans tuning in or fans of any other team, yeah, that was the most normal game of the Leafs season so far. And it still found a way to be completely bonkers. Hey, did you hear that Eric Fair got waived this morning? Hey, I guess Dominic Moore won. Which is why I was super concerned when two minutes into the game it looked like he got hit with a laundry machine. He got up. It's okay, he got up. Matt Martin comes over and gets into a fight. Yeah, that's the Matt Martin I know. Fights Andy Andreoff, who's one of those local guys who everyone's like, you know, I went to high school school with him. I told a story like that to Andrei Osachenko, who I used to do KHL highlights with. Andre, if you don't know, is from Russia. And I was telling him the story, oh yeah, I went to the same elementary school as Chris Draper, and I thought it was really interesting, and he did not. And when I asked why, he just goes, you're from Canada. Everybody has this story. Everyone from Canada went to the same school as Chris Draper? It really is a small place. Look, I'm just trying to delay the part where I get mad. Okay, you know how I'll do that? I'll talk about the least first goal. Hey, do you hear how Roman Polak got signed? Yeah, we'll get to that. Well, he takes a shot, and the puck goes in the net, because of course it's a, their net, by the way. I feel like I should specify. Not that I didn't have faith. I had faith in Polak the whole time. Matt Martin gets credit for the goal. It's the first period, and he's already an assist away from a Gordie Howe hat trick, and the Leafs have a 1-0 lead. Roman Polak in the P stands for point-a-game player. Yeah, that makes sense. Polak gets an assist in his first game, and Matt Martin tips it in. All right, set the timer for the Brooks Light goal. Yeah, no, 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 I'm serious. It's gonna happen. This is the Leafs. This is how it works, okay? Just listen to me. I have experience. Uh, and uh, it was 1-0 after 1, but oh, oh, we can't stop there. Zach Hyman battle in front and Jonathan Quick gets brained like brained they said over and over and over on the broadcast that it was Zach Hyman's shoulder that hit Jonathan Quick in the head it might have but I think Forbore's glove also got him kind of camouflage black glove I'm not totally sure but he either got a shoulder to the head or completely punched in the brain by his own teammate grabs his helmet oh we saw this happen to Freddie Anderson last season I'm a huge James Reimer fan I've seen this movie before as a matter of fact one time it was against the Kings someone brained James Reimer Quick's about to come out of the game all right here he comes and he's talking to the ref. And he's showing him his medical degree that he keeps next to his con smite. And he gets to stay in the game. Oh, okay. And then something like two minutes left in the first. Oh, no, you gotta come out. Oh, my goodness. There it is. Jonathan Quick is going for concussion protocol. Darcy Kemper coming into the game. And then Quick starts going back into the net. And then leaves again. And then the play starts and Kemper has to make a save. And there's Quick sitting on the bench. This isn't the quiet room. Are you trying to say the ACC's not loud enough? Oh, good sure. And then next whistle, Quick gets back into the game. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E -E. TheLeafsNation.com just nails it. Imagine having a sport this good and a league this bad. Is Quick hurt or not? Well, he says he's fine. Who cares? Every hockey player in the history of ever has said they're fine. And the 0.1% who say they're not fine, nobody believes them and people call them names. Suck it up and get in their old porridge brain. It's a playoff game. This from Chris Johnson makes it even more confusing. John Stevens, who's the coach of the LA Kings, always looks mad, says Jonathan Quick didn't go through any concussion testing. Then why was he taken out? Who told to take him out. It didn't look like he wanted to come out. Why did he come out? If the answer is the NHL's concussion protocol, then why wasn't he tested? You rinky-dink expensive excuse of a beer league? Well, Quick says he's fine. The whole reason those protocol people are there is because hockey players are lunatics. I never thought the Leafs could be 7-2 and two after 9 games, which by the way, the Leafs are 7-2. and two. I never thought the Leafs could be 7-2 and two after 9 games, and I'd be this disenchanted with the whole league and season. Every single game, I'm like, what's what's going on? Holy mackerel, let's get to the second. Because all we got some more screaming. Leafs on the power play, can Chaos in front, and his name is like the movie character. Pose Lightyear to the rescue. The Leafs have a 2-0 lead, and because it's the Leafs, it's going to last a really long time. 58 seconds later, Adrian Kempe comes in on Freddy, and ooh, Freddy, dude, that's, that's freaking terrible, dude. My room smells fantastic. That goal does not, and the Leafs' lead is cut in half as soon as they got it. You know, there have been a lot of times this season where you go, you know, it would have been nice if Freddy had that, but damn the team and the defense, it was so bad. How about your goalie? For this one, no, you could have put up like a shooter tutor, and it would have been better. Which sucks, because up until this point. He was probably having his best game of the season, maybe save for the first one. You know what I completely skipped over and I gotta go back? Mitch Marner's playing soccer, you know, like Mitch does, that little adventure on skates. Christian Foley comes in and buries him. Matt Martin comes in and says, you're literally not allowed to hit into one of my line. Foley beats him to the punch, literally, and then it's a pretty good fight. Martin sends his message. He's an assist away from a Gordie Howe hat trick and he's a fight away from a fight hat trick or a Ty Domi hat trick, I don't know. Now, <laughs> the third period. We're talking about Matt Martin a lot. He, he might have been the Leafs' best player in this game. I'm serious. I'm dead serious. He had a great game, at least by his standards. Whatever. No, you don't want him. Okay, how about a fellow fourth liner, Mitch Marner? Two 
Nemesis. Doesn't have to make sense, it's the Leafs. Matt Martin crashes the net. Jonathan Quick, way out of position, because that's that's kind of his thing, by the way. Every time I watch him play and then I look at his resume, I'm like, I, I don't get it. Mitch Marner, like, literally waits for Quick to get back into position, and he just goes, no. After what seems like an eternity, Mitch Marner finally shoots and it goes in, hooray! No, waved off immediately for goaltender interference. And they review it, which means they got to watch it again, and they still said, no, it's goaltender interference. At the Justin Fisher had a very good tweet. After Quick goes down, he makes one move right and another move forward. Two separate moves to attempt to make a save. That's ridiculous. Now, the whole thing with all these reviews is the NHL just wants to get it right. But as Ray Ferraro pointed out on the broadcast, and I think he was correct, if you really think it's goaltender interference, once Matt Martin is in there, blow the play dead. Let's say between the chair and the, and the little Stanley Cup in the corner there, let's say that is the net. He gets knocked over here. He flings himself over here and then goes all the way up here. And then Mitch Marner still has the puck and he just stops playing. He's just like, well, suppose that's going in. After the contact with Matt Martin, Quick had time to make not one but two moves and then quit on the play while Marner still had the puck. Another good point by Justin. He was absolutely interfered with but had time to recover. And if you're not calling the initial interference a penalty, that's a good goal. Marner had a wide open net to shoot at and he didn't shoot at it because he wanted to allow a quick time to get back into the net and quick flung himself out of it on the other side. That should have been Marner's third point of the night. I thought that stunk. Moments later, Morgan Riley puts it on, Patrick Marlowe tips it, and there you go, the Leafs are on top 3-1. And this is the delicate flower that this sport is. I think the Mitch Marner goal that was deemed goaltender interference, I think the reason that stayed not a goal is because the initial call on the ice was not a goal. I think the Patrick Marlowe tip-in goal was called a goal because the initial call on the ice was a goal. Leaf fans, how many of you saw that goal and went, I don't know. Pretty borderline, right? Hard to really make a conclusive call, right? Welp, luckily the call on the ice stood because that's that's the one they're going with. Question of the game, how many of you are new hockey fans? And by that, I mean you started watching hockey regularly, let's say in the last 12 months, the last 365 days. Does this stuff piss you off? Maybe a better question, does this stuff throw you off? How many times are you watching and you go, yeah, all right, sure. Because as someone who's been watching my entire life, yeah, that's just kind of how I feel too. I think people who become hockey fans become hockey fans because they want to. They allow themselves to. They look at this sport and they go, there's something there. I'm going to let myself enjoy this. But I don't think the regular consumers like that. I think most people go, all right, entertain me. And if you don't do that after five minutes, if you're lucky, they tune out. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a reason I'm a giant hockey fan. I think it's the best sport on earth. The most fun, the most entertaining sport on earth. I just feel like it's a sport that has a lot of moments where if you're new, you're like, all right, I'm out. Lost in the melee there. Riley actually picks up his seventh assist on that one. He's looking good. And here he is on the power play. Good to see him getting more power play. Oh, no, 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 never mind. I'm sorry. Trevor Lewis capitalizes on a Riley giveaway. Riley can't quite catch up to him. Beautiful move on Frederick Anderson. I blamed him for the first one. Not going to blame him for that one. That was sick. <laughs> Ran out of breath. And uh, the Leafs are running out of opportunities to not choke. But you know, the darndest thing happened. Because when the Leafs have a two goal lead in the third period, and it's cut to one, here's where my mind goes. All right, the Leafs are either about to completely choke and lose this game with a Brooks-like game winner, either in regulation or the shootout, or they're gonna find a way to cough up the lead and win by three goals. And you know what? That 3-2 game with an uncomfortable amount of time left, and in 3-2. In part, thanks to a ridiculous interference penalty from Jonathan Quick. Leo Komarov in there being an annoying jerk. Drew Doughty tries to get him. He jumps out of the way and Quick just blockers him to the ice. Thought it wasn't going to get called. It got called. Good call by the ref 140 feet away. Now, some people were talking about that like, oh, come on. Does that get called all the time? What is that? I've said it before. I'll say it again. You can get away with little hooks sometimes, little slashes, a little bit of interference, a little bit of everything. But if it affects possession, which on this play is... It did, the ref's gonna call it. If you're just being jerks amongst yourselves behind the play, often the refs are just gonna look the other way, they don't care. But if two players are going for the puck and you mess with one of them, you knock them to the ice, yep, they're gonna call it. Zaitsev almost gave the puck away again, thought better of it, and the Leafs win the game. Frederick Anderson, who has struggled this season, stopped 36 of 38, including 17 in the first period where he allowed no goals. The fact that the Leafs got out of that period with a lead is a miracle, and it's big on Freddie. And the reason you look so good 
It's because he was confident because Roman Polak was in there. Alright, so what do I think of the Roman Polak setting? Uh, well, I hate it as a guy who called Connor Carrick the hill I'm willing to die on. Behold, it is me dead. Look, Babcock badly wanted Roman Polak back on his team. He wants him back in the lineup, but he broke his leg! And I think a big part of the hesitation when it came to signing him was, well, how fully recovered is he? So with that being the case, I don't think he's gonna play every game. So Carrick's gonna play, Rosen is down for now, and Martin Marinson, well, it was nice knowing you. Speaking of nice knowing you, that had to be a weird moment when JVR went down hurt. Everyone going, oh, and then looking over at Josh Levo. What? And then JVR, who's knee bent in a terrible, terrible way? He gets up, he's fine. Skates off under his own power and just chilling with a with a mouth guard dangling out of his mouth. Camera pans up to Lou Lamorello. He looks unperturbed. Shanahan is like dunking his tea bag. Not like he just killed somebody in a video game. I'm talking about an actual tea bag. Like I thought it was weird to have a caffeinated beverage that late, but I mean I was amped up too. Here though I think is the biggest reason Polak was signed and why I think it's a good thing. Do you want Ron Hainsey and Nikita Zaitsev to explode by Christmas? Because that's what they're on pace to do. And it's been working for the Leafs so far. They're top 10 in penalty kill, but this can't sustain. You gotta have more than two and a half guys who can kill a penalty. But apparently if your name isn't Zaitsev or Hainsey or sometimes Riley, Babcock just doesn't trust you to kill penalties. Borgman's gonna grow into that role, I think. He had a good game too, but right now the Leafs need someone else who, at very least, Babcock trusts when down a man. But what are we talking so somber for? The Leafs won 7-2! and two. Not won 7-2, and two. we're not talking about Montreal. They won and they're seven and two. Here's the more fist pumps to come. Carolina's coming up next at home again. That's gonna be a fun game. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends that the league's one of the league's best teams, even if the league is a little weird. Maybe that's what makes it weird. You know what, just go tell your, I wanna hit 100,000 subscribers.